Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have the indefinite integral of negative sine theta minus 7 times cosine theta over sine cubed theta plus 2 sine squared theta plus sine theta plus 2 d theta. So pause the video if you want to try it on your own. Pretty similar idea to the most recent integral of the day. So the steps are the steps of this solution are very similar to that one. All right. So I'm just going to jump right in. First, we're going to make a U sub, and then we'll go ahead and, no surprise, there's going to be some partial fraction decomposition involved. I know some of you like to come up with clever ways to avoid the partial fractions. I don't mind it. I like partial fractions, but maybe that's just me. So let's go ahead. Let's let U be sine theta. And that was jumping out at me because notice the denominator is a function of sine theta, I've got this negative sine theta minus 7, and then one lonely little cosine theta d theta. Oh my goodness, poor little cosine theta d theta. But that'll just beautifully get absorbed in this u sub because du is, that's right, cosine theta d theta. So now let's rewrite this integral all in terms of u. So upstairs we'll have negative u minus 7 du. Let me put it on the side, it'll look better. Over u cubed plus 2u squared plus u plus 2. And then the du I'll put right here. All right. Now it's partial fraction time. For me it is. If you want to do something else, have at it. We have negative u minus 7 in the numerator. And then we need to factor the denominator. There's four terms, but have no fear. We can factor by grouping. Notice you could take out a u squared from these two terms. And you have u plus 2. And then similarly here, that's basically 1, right, times u plus 2. So the denominator will factor into u squared plus 1 times u plus 2. Now, anytime you have an irreducible quadratic in the denominator, your partial fraction decomposition will have the following form. We have that factor downstairs, and then you need a linear expression in terms of u upstairs, a u plus b in the numerator plus, and then u plus 2, that's just linear factor, so all I need is a constant c up here. Very good. Now we're going to multiply through by the LCD, u squared plus 1 times u plus 2, and let's see what unfolds. So I've got negative u minus 7 equals a u plus b times u plus 2 plus c times u squared plus 1. And then now we're just going to distribute our little hearts out. So this is AU squared plus 2AU plus BU plus 2B plus CU squared plus C. So from here, I'm going to equate the coefficients of like terms, starting with U squared. There's no U squared on the left. So that has to equal, oh, there's my alarm. I beat it again today. Uh, zero u squared has to equal a plus c, correct, a plus c, and then u to the first, we've got negative one u to the first, that must equal, that's right, two a plus b, two a plus b, and then my constant term u to the zero, that's negative seven, that equals 2b plus c. So no two equations involve the same two variables, but you can go ahead. Let's see. Um, let me take this equation down here and subtract the one above from it. So if I subtract 0 equals a plus c, now I have negative 7 equals 2b minus a. And then I like to combine that with this one right here, since it involves a's and b's as well. However, let me go ahead, double this equation. So this one's going to be negative 14 equals 4b minus 2a. And then this one's going to come down here, negative 1 equals, I'll write it as b plus 2a, if that makes you feel better. So then my a's cancel, this is negative 15 equals 5b, so b is negative 3, beautiful. 
If b is negative 3, then let's see, I can just come back here. Negative 7 equals negative 6 minus a. Move over the negative 6, negative 1 is negative a. So a is 1. And then if a plus c is 0, then c is negative 1. Okay, and right now I did it differently than how I did it the first time. So obviously there's multiple ways to solve this system. Do what inspires you, following the rules of mathematics. Okay, so let's put everything together back to our integral. So we have the following. Integral of, it was a u, so 1 u plus b over u squared plus 1 plus c, which is negative 1, over, what was the other factor? u plus 2. Du. Okay, very good. Now, how you proceed from here kind of depends on where you are in your calculus journey. I say that because if you're just like a Calc 2 student learning all of these techniques right now, then you're going to want to really break it down. Um, some of you who are very advanced to watch these videos, you could probably finish this guy off in a couple steps and do a lot of it in your head. But I'm going to really write it out slowly in case someone's watching this as a tutorial. So we have u over u squared plus 1 minus 3 over u squared plus 1 minus 1 over u plus 2. And this is a common technique to employ at this step because each of these terms I'm going to deal with differently. With this one, I'm going to make another substitution. Notice the degree of the numerator is one degree lower than the degree of the denominator. So that'll work out beautifully. This is going to involve tan inverse. Hopefully you recognize. And then again, this is just going to be a simple natural log. So we can break it up into three little integrals. And each one gets its own du. So don't be sloppy. I was just looking at my students' work last week. They split them up. They, they put three integral signs, but only one of them got a du, which is a big no-no. If you split them up, every integral has to have its own differential. Minus integral 1 over u plus 2 du. Do you know what I'm saying? So if you're going to split it up like so, everybody gets a du. I'll call this guy 1, 2, 3. So integral number 1, when you're more advanced, you have a lot of experience, you could probably just do this all in your head. But for now, let me write it out. I'm going to pick a new variable. I already used up u. Let me let t be u squared plus 1. And then dt is 2u du. Well, all I have is u du. So 1 half dt is that u du. Great. And I can rewrite this now as 1 half integral dt over t. Beautiful. So this is 1 half natural log absolute value of t plus c1 because this is the constant from my first little baby integral. And then let's go back. Let's replace t with u squared plus 1. But since u squared plus 1 isn't going to be negative, I'm just going to switch to parentheses. I don't have to keep those absolute value bars. All right, very good. Integral number 2 was 3 over u squared plus 1. I'll put the negative back in at the end. Don't worry. 3 over u squared plus 1 du. Hopefully you recognize antiderivative is just 3 tan inverse of u plus c2. Nothing wild going on there. Third integral also had a minus sign in front of it, right? I'll bring that back in. It's just 1 over u plus 2 du. The plus 2 isn't doing anything wild, so ln absolute value u plus 2 plus c3. Okay, so later probably you can just go term by term in your head and then write the result and not have to do much work, but for now if you need to see it this is what it should look like and you want to save just plain old plus c for the very very end of your integral. So now we have all together one half natural log, I just have u squared plus, what was it, 1, minus 3, tan inverse of u, minus natural log absolute value, u plus 2, plus
plus C, and then we're going to tell the people C is C1 minus C2 minus C3, because those two integrals had minus signs in front of them. And then we're not done. Remember, U was, that's right, sine of theta. So this is 1 half natural log sine squared theta plus 1 minus 3 tan inverse sine theta minus natural log. Again, sine theta is bounded between 1 and negative 1. So if I add 2, that won't ever be negative. So that's why I switched to parentheses. And then now we're done. Woohoo! Let's box it with pride. You know? Voila. How did you like that one? What was the spice level? I don't think this one's too bad. This is totally possible to put on an exam for Calc 2. Um, I would do one similar for them so that it's not like the first time they've seen something like this. But what I like about it is it incorporates more than one integration technique because I don't like to make super lengthy exams. Not too short either. That's obviously very stressful. But that nice medium length. And then if I can make sure that they know multiple concepts in the same problem. Ugh, it's fabulous. It's just fabulous. Okay, that's it. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Let me know how you solved it. Those of you who are so anti-partial fractions, I'm curious if you could find a workaround and not do it this time. <laughs> and stay tuned. I have more lovely integrals coming your way. Don't